Here's my advice for conservatives. We need to decide that as a collective movement, we actually want to liberate America from wokeness and demand representatives who want the same. Because we really need to realize that while there are plenty of conservative politicians who will stand in front of you like I'm standing in front of you now and call for the liberation of America from wokeness, they are delighted that the left has gone quite so insane because it makes their jobs so much easier. One of the worst parts of the political world is that most political figures can't really survive without having someone or something to run against or complain about. Don't forget that there's a massive difference between running for something and running against something else. And far too many people choose the latter because it's so much easier to not do anything and just spend your time pointing out how bad the alternative is. Given that the other side is doing exactly the same thing, this means that we're locked in a never-ending race to the bottom, where you never have to actually do anything or solve anything beyond presenting your opponent as incompetent or inexperienced or evil. Of course, sometimes your opponents are one or more of these things, but nevertheless, there is no incentive structure in place to reward actually changing anything. There's no incentive to actually win. What makes matters worse is that solving problems is also a bad thing for politicians if they care about keeping their job. On both sides of the aisle, an ongoing crisis is a good thing if you can present yourself as the only solution to that crisis. But that means you're tying your very political existence to that crisis, and so no crisis to solve, no reason to exist. There's no better proof of this than COVID-19. It was the ultimate cheat code for Congress, and they've started to panic knowing that the vast majority of Americans won't fall for the COVID excuse anymore. So with each passing day, they need to either pivot to an, another crisis of some kind, or they need to create new ones. And for far too many politicians on the right, wokeism is one of those crises, and a very real one that's not going away. The pure radicalism of the left in recent years allows politicians to appear on TV or social media or speaking events and present their uniform platform, that they are our one savior from wokeness. They'll fundraise, they'll rile up the base, they might even get voted in, but most of them won't solve the underlying problem of wokeness, either because they don't have a plan to do so, or they don't really have the desire to. Because without the radicalism of obvious in-your-face wokeness, their job would be much harder, because they'd have to prove why they deserve your vote. And that just sounds like a lot of work. And this is also a problem that goes beyond politicians alone. Just like politicians, many in the conservative movement more broadly have become lazy in the face of an easy opponent, an easy opponent that keeps on winning. This all points to a fundamental problem. Conservatives are far too comfortable being the underdog, far too comfortable sitting back with a self-satisfied sense of being morally better, watching from the sidelines and scoffing at the behavior of the left, all while we're left behind. The slightly over-the-top conservative embrace of Elon Musk and his potential purchase of Twitter reminds me of this problem. Why were conservatives quite so excited? After all, Elon Musk, by his own admission, is not a conservative. And while he might improve Twitter in the long run, nothing has even happened yet. He hasn't even officially bought the company. Well, one of the reasons some conservatives rushed to idolize Elon Musk was because he routinely owns the lips. Too many like Elon Musk because he makes the other side angry. They see him as one of ours and taking to Twitter to dunk on our enemies. But we've become so comfortable with being underdogs that those dunks alone are seen as a victory. Meanwhile, we're still losing the game. This attitude has become endemic in the conservative movement. We've given up real success in the form of an improving society and culture, and all we want now is the short-term gratification of owning the other side, of slamming bad ideas without presenting arguments in favor of good ones and encouraging others to walk away from the left with the almost arrogant assumption that they would join our side in response. Now, it is easy to understand how we originally found ourselves in this position. The left dominates every institute in American life, often in part due to our own lack of foresight and unwillingness to fight. Regardless of who is in the White House or who controls Congress, the left's grip on the media, education, finance, tech, medicine, and even the science ensures that we're moving to the left anyway. This level of widespread dominance means that conservatives are now the underdog in almost every cultural battle. And what's one good thing about being an underdog? No one really expects you to win. This means that being seen putting up a good fight is too often judged as enough, breeding a complete lack of desire and ambition. Why bother risking anything to win when you can risk nothing and live as a perpetual underdog? And with each passing day, the left continues to win and wokeness spreads. So 
How do we liberate America from wokeness? We can start by liberating ourselves from this lack of ambition, by stepping out from the comfortable shade of being the cultural underdog, by deciding that the goal is to win. There are many ways we can achieve this ultimate goal. We must start by being bold enough to proudly and clearly explain the culture we want to build. It's not enough to share viral videos of children at drag shows. We must build a movement that explains precisely why such behavior is detrimental. It's not enough to sit on the sidelines and post our smirking reactions to the latest insane comments from a random person with blue hair and no bra. We must attack the underlying ideas and become the ones they are responding to. It's not enough to complain every time a Democrat raises the LGBTQ, ABCD, EFG flag over a government building. We must become the movement which teaches people what flags represent and why the American flag is a uniting image while the rainbow flag has become quite the opposite. Essentially, we must wrestle the narrative from them. We must define the terms of engagement. And part of this also means not stooping to the same level as the left when it suits us. It means not idolizing any random celebrity who comes along just because they happen to have one viewpoint that we like. It means deconstructing the absurdity of identity politics, valuing ideas and character rather than celebrating our own representatives solely based on their skin color or gender or heritage. And it means resisting the temptation to insist on purity tests for those in our own movement, rather than uniting based on clear and fundamental conservative principles. Lastly, what we also need to do is realize that we have one unbeatable advantage over the left. The facts are on our side. As the absurdity of the less falsehoods become more apparent, the security of the right's core truths remain as steady as ever. Progressivism, by definition, must involve constant progress. When they've progressed past one goal, they must keep progressing, no matter how ridiculous the next goal is. This actually presents us with the ultimate opportunity, even though the stakes haven't been this high in decades. As this kind of ideological extremism grows, setting out to win by providing people with a conservative view of reality can result in massive success. Let's think about last year's expose of Loudoun County's alleged cover-up of a sexual assault in a Virginia school. This didn't rely on grandstanding or reaction videos or tweets, but instead focused reporting, which simply put what was happening in front of people's eyes. Not only did that story uncover the true dangers of gender theory in public education, it also swung an entire election. Objective truth itself is built into the genetic makeup of conservatism. It's part of what we value and what the new left increasingly denies. When we settle for complaining for cherry picking the easiest from the left to criticize, for owning the libs from the sidelines, we do ourselves and our movement a damaging disservice. So how do we liberate America from wokeness? Shake off the comforts of being perpetual underdogs, where cultural loss is both profitable and safe, and fight for a world in which we might not need our political saviors anymore. Get off the sidelines and tell the truth. Get off the sidelines and build a true alternative to the woke, providing proof that a conservative model for America is far superior to the inevitable outcome of radicalism. Get off the sidelines and prosper. That's how we win.